I'm Sarah Colas. Welcome to the Dressing Up Podcast, where we talk about all things bridal dresses and general dressing up topics. I love to encourage women to dress up while expressing their personal style with confidence on how to do so. Visit sarahcolas.com to book a bridal alteration fitting, or even inquire about designing the custom couture bridal gown of your dreams. I am so excited to talk to you about this next topic. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Dressing Up podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with us. We have Ryan Bell here. So Ryan, can you tell us what makes you qualified to be on this podcast? Uh, I think at this point, I still qualify as a newlywed, right? Megan and I's wedding was back on October 29th, 2022. So it's been about three and a half months and it's been a good amount of time to look back and reflect on you know, what went right, what I would have done different, things like that. But yeah, lots uh, of marriage advice for us yeah, too, right? Yeah. Three, three months in. <laughs> Basically a veteran at this point. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> great, great. Awesome. So a question I've been asking my guests is, we are on the Dressing Up podcast after all. What is your favorite item in your closet right now? I got to throw some love to sweater weather right now. So <laughs> as cliche as that sounds, I really look forward to the winter time where you know, the default is a nice pair of slacks or pants. And then you just throw on like a really nice sweater because it's comfortable and fashionable. There's not many times in the season where you get to do both of those things. So I think that's what I would have to stick with. Awesome. Thank you. So if you are a man listening to this podcast episode right now, I guarantee you it's because your fiance asked you to listen to this (laughs) podcast, which will be a very good thing for you. Trust me, we're going to go through a lot of wedding day tips from the groom's point of view. So this is a little different for me. I work with brides all the time, but rarely do I get a chance to work with the grooms. So you might be wondering why Ryan, well, Ryan is my brother-in-law. So my husband's brother, and he just had a fabulous wedding at the Shinola Hotel in late October. I made your then fiance's wedding dress, Megan's wedding dress. So we did that from start to finish. It was a gorgeous gown. So let's jump into it. I'm going to start with a question for you, Ryan. Okay. What was your favorite part of the wedding day? Uh, it's going to sound cliche, but it's got to be my, it. my bride. Definitely. It was really special getting to see her in her gown, all dressed up. It's that day that you think about since childhood. So I, I, I hope Megan listens and gives me a little bit of a props on that, but I would say my bride made my day there. Definitely. Oh, that's so nice. And what's something that you think of just when you look back at your gorgeous wedding photos, yeah. what's something that comes to mind? You know, a little bit out there, but I would say how unique it is to have everybody that you care about in your life in one place at one time. Because you think about it, you know, you have holiday get togethers, you have your family there, but you don't have your friends or you have a birthday party and you have your friends, but maybe not your family there. Mm -hmm. Wedding is really one of the few days where kind of everybody you care about is in one spot, which is kind of a unique thing, which is obviously why weddings are so special. But Looking through the photos, seeing everybody there, everybody dressed up, everybody there for you, nevertheless. It's really a cool feeling. Definitely. I'm sure you feel the same way about your wedding as well, right? Very special time where you have everybody in one space. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So Ryan, let's jump into some of the advice that you have to give the groom. So grooms, listen up. This is this is some really important stuff coming your way. All I right. can't, I came prepared today. So <laughs> I got seven tips for grooms leading up to their wedding day. Some of them a little bit obvious, but we'll dive into the list and we'll, we'll kind of work backwards. So number seven, I had, don't be afraid of a little bit of self-care before the wedding, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, it, you know, it sounds, it sounds funny, but you know, me in particular, like I just went to a barber. I never really thought about like, well, how much of a five o'clock shadow do you want? What kind of hairstyle are you going to do? Don't do a new one right before the wedding. That's a good piece of advice. Yeah. But even the little things like, you know, you're, you're going to be the most photographed day of your life. Obviously I think brides know that, but I don't think every groom thinks about that. Good point. So, you know, I did teeth whitening, you know, I tanned beforehand. I know that's maybe a little taboo these days, but well, when it's late, October, I guess (laughs) that makes sense. But you know, it's, it's crazy because it applies to both the groom and the bride. You're going to have a hundred thousand photographs of you that day. Everybody's going to be looking at you and you want to feel your best, you know, and I wouldn't recommend waiting till a week before your wedding to start thinking about some of those things. You really got to mm-hmm. put in, you know, 
if you're going to incorporate working out, trying to get in shape, which I tried, it was <laughs> semi-successful at working out. You got to, you got to kind of put in some work, you know, two, three months out, same mm-hmm. with the teeth whitening. Cause you're not going to want to go to a dentist and get the $500 treatment, just buy some white strips, mm-hmm. coordinate with your bride. Right. I had Megan, literally, I would go get a haircut and then shave and she would count the days before like the stubble looked good and we determined like five days was like the magical number okay I like that did a test run yeah yeah but after all that prep work I have to admit I kind of got flubbed on my haircut Uh, the person I was supposed to go back to called in sick and I got a different Uh. person and my hair wasn't horrible but they faded it a little higher than I was used to no and, fixing that. Yeah. Megan was panicked when I came home that day, but it bounced back. It looked great in the photos. It, it grew out a little bit, but plan ahead and don't be afraid of a little self-care, I would say is my number I seven. Like that. And if you want to totally change your hairstyle for your wedding day, maybe you try that like six months ahead of time. Yes. Like, you know, it's coming. <laughs> yes. You know the wedding date. So let's try it and test it first. So things can all grow back if need be. Yeah. And I'll give you a plug to yours because the same should really kind of apply to your groomsman party. Cause I pulled a (laughs) little bit of a game day stop and I shaved my head about two weeks prior to your wedding. And honestly, I regret it a little bit because, you know, I'm going to get there eventually. And I think it was a little too soon, but. And it was like the only month in your entire life you've had a shave time. So every time we look at your wedding (laughs) <laughs> a totally different haircut for Ryan, but that's okay. Yeah. But yeah, good point that the, the groomsmen should be thinking of these things yeah. too. Yeah, and it's the groom's job to manage his groomsmen. So don't put it all on your bride either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need some tasks too. Yes, yes. It's the least you could do. Awesome. And the white strips one is good too. That That's, yeah. yeah. I mean, again, I, I work with brides all the time, so I don't hear from grooms much, but that is a really good point that we we put so much focus on what the bride looks like, but yeah. we need a little attention for the grooms too. Yeah, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. You know, all the details matter. Everything from, you know, the bride thinks about how high her heels should be because yeah. you want that magical, just the yeah. right height difference yeah. and everything. And so you got to think about it. And as a groom, don't leave it to the week prior. You'll regret it. You'll say, oh, I wish I would have run and gotten shape. I wish I would have whitened my teeth or mm-hmm. my haircut. Mm-hmm. Don't wait. Your bride's putting in a ton of work for the big day. Yeah. Put some effort in, you know? <laughs> That's great advice. Now, what if one of those things goes wrong? Like you're saying yeah. your fade was a little high. Like, how do you deal with that? You just, you got to kind of just move on, right? Or yeah. what do you think? I think you probably give this advice to brides all the time. Maybe men don't hear it as much. Something inevitably will go wrong. And it's not what happens. It's how you deal with it. So you just got to kind of work through it. For us, the haircut thing ended up working good because we were primarily looking for black and white photos. And so the fade in black and white, you can't really tell because it really makes it kind of grainy a little bit. So it works out okay. Something will go wrong, whether you're the groom or the bride. Don't let it ruin all the things going right on that day, right? I mean, the haircut is what it is. It's hair. It grows back, yeah. right? <laughs> There's so many things you plan for. And it, I mean, you could total all those things up. It could be hundreds of yeah. things. It is very unlikely that every single one of those things is going to go yeah. Yeah. as planned. So yes, just got to roll with it. All okay. right. You ready for number six? <laughs> number six. Okay. This one plays into a lot of the things you helped us out with tremendously, which is- okay know the run a show as the groom don't go into it being surprised like what are we doing after this or do it after that or waiting the day prior because i was surprised how much coordination it took getting all the groomsmen in the right place at the right time and you only had three it only had three yeah and i've been to weddings (laughs) i've been to weddings where they have like me and six of my friends and two brothers yeah, that was one that really kind of surprised me. I wouldn't have thought of ahead of time. It's just like, oh, you know, they'll tell you where to stand, where to show up and all that. But it really is a pageantry of so many little things. Like first we're doing that, then we're doing this. That really caught me off guard. And that was something that I was not prepared it's a busy for. Day. <laughs> it is, it is. Fortunately, we had a fantastic uh, sister-in-law helping us out, oh, following well, us it around. Been and- nice. <laughs> It was, and not even at my own wedding. You've bailed me out at at, other weddings, at, yeah, at your wedding, at my best friend's wedding. Yeah. So I bring that sewing kit for Ryan. Yes, yeah. <laughs> all yeah. the little things we might need. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, I went to my best friend's wedding in Louisville, 
and men's shirts, the tuxedo shirts have removable buttons to put the studs in. And I had grabbed the wrong dress shirt, panicked. And I'm the best man in the wedding. About 20 minutes before the wedding, I ran up to Sarah's room. I was like, Sarah, Sarah. He didn't, you didn't realize it was the yeah, wrong shirt no. until 20 minutes getting before ready. the wedding. And you're getting ready for the wedding too. Oh my gosh, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, you got to help. And she cut off the buttons and cut in a slit so that the studs could go through. Nobody ever noticed, but you bailed me out big time. You didn't I, tell Mike, right? At the time. I told him after, after the fact, yeah. after the fact, I wasn't going to tell Sabrina. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. That's one of those little things yeah. that will go wrong. You yeah. know, it's a little secret for the day, but I remember yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. That was a, that was a fond memory of you bailing me out big time. I'm sure. You know, for my wedding, I was less worried about Billy being ready. I was more yeah. worried about my best man, Ryan. Yes, so. yes. But so. it's okay. I I don't know if anything went wrong for you on our wedding day. No, so I think it no, was it didn't. Your wedding day was smooth, yeah. but it really applies. Thinking even back to your wedding, you know, there was, you guys had a lot of room changes where we went from this room yes. to that room. And even being the best man, you kind of got to, you got to know what you're doing, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely. And I think what can be really annoying to couples, the bride and the groom, the day of the wedding is the bridal party constantly asking, oh, what time do we have to be here? Yes, oh, what's next? Yes. What are we doing next? <laughs> oh, can I go to the bathroom real quick? Oh, this yeah. and that. Know the schedule. I'm sure yeah. the bride and groom gave you a schedule ahead of time. So it's your responsibility to know that schedule. Don't be asking the bride and groom those questions. Yeah, I, I that can agree. be stressful. No, hundred percent. I mean, even I wish I would have printed it out and just gave everybody a little note. Card. Yeah. Like here's the. Honestly, that would probably be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That was a big one. I, yeah. I was, uh, that was the one that I wouldn't have guessed if I were listening to this list kind of the blue. I never would have thought about that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. I think we're on number five, yep. right? Working backwards from seven. So now yeah. we're on five. <laughs> this one's a little bit self-evident, but it was something I took away from you guys actually, which is don't schedule the honeymoon for the day after the wedding. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like you're talking the immediate, immediate day, day after. after. Okay. Yeah. And okay. my bride was adamant. She's like, the flights are cheaper. We went to Aruba, right? Mm -hmm. We got married on a Saturday and she's like, it's cheaper if we fly out like Sunday, we'll do yeah. Sunday night. And I was just yeah. like, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sensitive person. If I maybe drink too much, I don't feel good for like a day. <laughs> And I put my foot down on this. This is one of the few things we disagreed on, actually. And yeah. she admitted later on that that was the right decision. But okay. I was like, "Are you are you trying to tell Megan I told you so right now on this podcast?" <laughs> Listen, I will I'll, I'll clarify the record. I think okay. it's like a hundred to one. She's up on me on things, okay. but this is one of those <laughs> one. So, well, we got to shine this one bright then. <laughs> yes, but you know, I just didn't want to be rushed. And actually, that next day is a really strange feeling, right? You yeah. feel like it's all over, yeah. right? You're married, you're driving home. You haven't even been back to your house yet, you know, and you're driving home married and you're like, oh, okay. And the last thing you want to do is be packing bags, rushing, worrying about a flight. You know, even a lot of weddings, they do the breakfast that we did and mm -hmm. put the breakfast the morning after. Mm -hmm. I really recommend at least a day, you know, we flew out Monday, but even maybe two isn't crazy. Don't feel like you have to rush. Wait, you right did into... fly out Monday or you flew out Sunday? You flew out you... Sunday. We flew out Monday. Oh, you did fly out, out Monday. Okay, Monday. perfect. Yeah, we okay, got married good. Saturday, good. had all day Sunday to recover. Okay. And had an 8 a.m. flight on Monday. Mm -hmm. But I would say even Tuesday wouldn't be crazy because yeah. it's just so much like drain. Yeah. You put everything into that yeah. day for months. And yeah. then the idea of getting on a plane and, and I feel like honeymoons these days are so extravagant. People yeah. are like, oh, I'm yeah. going to Asia for, yeah. you know, or Euro <laughs> tour. Yeah. Yeah. And we just went to Aruba, which is not bad. It's like a five hour flight, mm -hmm. but even that was tiring. So you guys went to, where'd you go on your honeymoon? We did Bahamas and we nice. did fly out early Monday morning. And that was great too. I think another point I'm going to build off of that is that I didn't even think about the honeymoon until the morning after the wedding, I didn't pack for it at all. Cause the day before the wedding, you know, I, that was the last thing on my mind. I was still busy getting ready for the wedding. So yes, having a day, I was able to just do all my packing like right then. And I didn't have to like stress about the honeymoon before the wedding. I could focus on the wedding. I mean, I guess yeah. one day packing is kind of quick, but for me it was easy, but yeah. Um, yeah. But it does, good. it does make a difference you know, big difference. Don't yeah. plan this big, long day and then immediately be stressed out about catching a flight, packing a bag. Yes. Give, give yourself a break, even from a guy's perspective, which our job is a hundred times easier. 
it's nice to have a a day just to catch your breath and say, ah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just relax, have a slow morning yes, and enjoy it. Yeah. Not yeah. rushing off to the next thing. Yeah. Definitely. Good point. Good point. We're moving down this list. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, next one I had, we're on number four. This was a big one that was a little controversial. Okay. And I think this is what we we did different versus you guys. Is yeah. We did the the first look yes. ahead of time. Did you guys do that as we well? We didn't. And okay. I, I slightly regret it. I kind of, I'm really? Really all for the first looks now. Yes. Yeah. I I didn't even know what it was to be clarified until okay. about, a, yeah. about a, a month prior to our wedding. For all the guys listening, that's where you go and meet your bride in like a more intimate setting, just you and her sometimes, you know, sometimes obviously the photographer's there and kind of get the, the feels out then. So that you're not getting it, you know, seeing her for the first time walking down the aisle, which is obviously special to some people too. But I really thought that the first look was really much more practical mm -hmm. if, um, especially schedule if wise, I, yeah, you can get a lot of your photos done and out of the way. Yeah. And for us being an October wedding, one of the things you don't think about till months leading up is like, well, what time is sunset? And yeah. you want to catch the right lighting for the photos. And for Very us, good point. yeah, our wedding was at five. Uh, we wrapped up at five thirty, but sunset was six ten. So you know, getting yeah. the first look out of the way really gave us a solid thirty to forty five minutes to do all the family and bridal party photos. Plus, I do think it was like it was personal. It was different. You could talk to each other because when you do it like you did when you're coming down the aisle and that's the first time you see. Well, now you're in front of a million people. So you're trying to keep your composure. You can't like say anything to each other. So, you know, that was something that Megan suggested. Actually, I think our photographer really pushed it because of the timing. Mm -hmm. And I would really think that, you know, it's not particular to the groom, but it really makes it a lot easier for the wedding as a whole. So definitely recommend first look. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be talking about this more in your other advice, but you had some other tips for the first look that you've told me before. You're going to have to refresh me on that. <laughs> what, the, like a Kleenex? Oh, having a tissue and all of that. Yeah. Tell us why you didn't want to do that and then why you regretted it, Ryan. Well, it was funny. I am not like a very sensitive person. And, you know, Megan jokes, we had dated for six years leading up to the wedding. And she's like, I've never seen you cry. And I, not that I'm like some tough, you know, lumberjack macho man or anything. <laughs> I'm just like not an emotional person at all. And she even gave me an ultimatum. She's like, if you don't cry when you see me, I'm not continuing with the wedding. And I was like, oh, no pressure. Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah. And the punchline is I ended up being the world's biggest softie. I couldn't stop crying when I saw Megan, especially oh at the first look. And she looked so beautiful in her dress. And it even flowed over into the wedding too. I was like, yeah. oh my God, it's starting again, you know? That's so, so sweet. Not on the list, but tip four and a half, bring a Kleenex. You won't regret it. <laughs> because you didn't bring a Kleenex. No, I was, you really thought you weren't going to cry. I thought I was going to have to force it. I was not going to like. You're going to have to fake it. Yeah, putting a pin in my pocket and just stab yeah. myself or something. All right. But I did not have to fake it, partly because of the beautiful dress she was wearing. Oh. So. <laughs> oh. so, yeah. So you were you were missing having a Kleenex or something. Like yes. the tears that you could have good photos right after that. Yes. So yeah. that's a good one. So even if you don't think you're going to cry, just bring a Kleenex or bring a Kleenex for the bride too. Yeah. Like how sweet that, would that's be? thoughtful. That's yeah. Thoughtful. Yeah. yeah. Cause the ones that don't cry normally are usually probably going to be the ones that are the biggest babies once they get up. There, yeah. So. It like <laughs> surprises you. Yeah. So yeah, the complete opposite <laughs> of what you would expect. Oh. So, so what were your thoughts when you first saw Megan? Oh, it was amazing. It's one of those things that you'll never forget. Right. It just like burned into the back of your brain, you know, and it's funny because the dress was almost exactly what I was envisioning, despite what my drawing looked like, which we'll have to talk about. That. <laughs> yeah, 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 we should. Yeah, but it was really, really, you know, as a kid, you know, as a guy, you don't think about. I think the brides think about when they grow up, you know, Prince Charming, this or that. Guys don't really like think about that necessarily, okay. but when you're engaged and you're leading up to it, you kind of think you know, oh, I want to marry this beautiful supermodel of a wife. And <laughs> and then being up there and actually seeing Megan be like, well, I actually did that. You know, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it makes you feel good. You're like, wow, it's just, it almost feels like it's surreal. You know what I mean? But the first look was great and we got to talk. I remember we hugged 
because I didn't want her to see me starting to cry. So I was like, I'm just going to hold her like this. So she can't see, you know, blocking your face. Yeah. Yeah. I was blocking my face and I was like, okay, pull together, pull together. And I kind of like let her go and moved her back forward. And then it just started again. You're like, oh, she's my star again. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then she hardly cried at all, but she was crying because she saw me cry. She's like, you need to stop. You're going to ruin my makeup. Like, (laughs) Pull it together, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, so it was funny. But you got to tell them about the drawing thing. So explain that to okay. the viewers. <laughs> so often when I do a custom dress for my brides, I have the groom draw a little sketch either the day before the wedding or the morning of the wedding of what they think the dress will look like. I did that for Billy when we were getting married and he was way off. But uh, well, a couple of <laughs> things were correct. So I had Ryan do his little sketch the morning of the wedding And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to have a a picture posted on YouTube (laughs) to show what Ryan sketched versus what the sketch You're going to have to take a poll too and see if the guys agree. If I was, I feel like I was very close. You know. (laughs) Interesting because I'll explain it for, if you're not on YouTube, Ryan drew this, the skirt on the dress that was very, very large and very voluptuous, but then it it came back in at the ankles which is something I've never seen before, Ryan. That's a brand new concept to me. (laughs) You know, very unflattering in my opinion. (laughs) And to clarify for the guys, when she says I sketched it, she gives you a straw wire frame that's like 95% done. You just have to fill in the lines a little bit. So it's not like I sketched this from scratch. I started it. So I didn't draw the dress, but I started the head and the arms. Yeah, you have a very good framework to fill in a few lines. But (laughs) my point was, I was like, it was going to be a little bit off white. It was going to be lace on top. I had a strong feeling she was going to do sleeves, which I called that out. And I knew it was going to be puffy, and then for whatever reason, I like pulled it back in at the ankles. But aside from that, and I knew I she was going to have her hair down. Okay. So when you point out those characteristics, I feel like I was fairly close, but you'll have to let the viewers decide on that. Wait, did you say her hair was down? Yeah, it was in the pony and down. It wasn't like an oh. updo. Oh, I guess okay. Is what I'm, okay. I'm in, I'm, in guy, I'm in guy speak right now. All right. Okay. So hair down means ponytail. Yeah, it was down like. Okay. Flowing. Okay. Okay. But actually, I that was a really really great activity. I yeah. I, we we laughed about that the whole next morning. <laughs> yeah. I was adamant trying to get people to agree with me. Like, look, I was spot on. <laughs> a fun little activity. Yeah. Because I I liked when I did that for Billy. I really wanted him to like finalize his thoughts on what he thought my dress was, so that after the wedding he wasn't like, oh, it's exactly what I thought. Because I could I would have proof that's not what you thought. <laughs> Yeah, every yeah. guy is going to be like, even with the drawing, I'm like adamant that like, I knew exactly what it was going to yeah, look like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, it looks the same. <laughs> it does not. Oh. But it's okay. I think I think what we ended up doing was much maybe prettier than what you're yeah. no, like, you, like, Are you happy with you, it? You, you brought it to fruition much better than I would okay. for, based on my sketch. It okay, really good. emphasized her a lot better than I would have. <laughs> yeah. uh, Megan would look good at anything. But yes, I think what we chose was a little bit. A little bit better. Good. Yeah, she looked amazing that day. All right. I am on number three now. Um, this one's a funny one. Definitely would recommend, especially from the grooms, getting dance lessons ahead of time before the wedding. You know, you got to kind of suck it up. You know, it's not ill masculine to, to go out and learn how to dance. Megan and I did that and it was funny we went to a dance studio. And, you know, you watch all the videos on YouTube of the crazy dances people do at their wedding. And you're like, oh yeah, this is easy. No problem. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. I could totally throw you eight feet in the air. That, that won't be a challenge. No big deal. And they're like, well, that's not really how this works. We really recommend that you learn several forms of dance. And, you know, and I was kind of like, oh, I think this is just like a money grab. They, they want to suck you in. And yeah, and we did. We got sucked in. It was kind of pricey, but we did 11 lessons and they don't teach you a choreographed dance which is what i thought they were going to say step here there there Mm -hmm. it was just these are some moves and back and i were actually kind of a little bit upset about that we're like i don't want to learn to dance i just want to somebody to give me a routine you know yeah and so we were going to actually get rid of the idea of doing this choreographed dance and just do what everybody else does a little slow dance traditional and a few weeks before the wedding we were like we feel like we have some pretty good building blocks we could just kind of put some moves together they showed us and watch some youtube videos 
And it ended up actually working kind of the exactly the way they were trying to push us to do it. They taught us. Okay. Yeah, we learned a few different, but the nightclub slow is what we learned, which is like step, step, side, side. And then we mixed in a bunch of kind of flair stuff that we just plagiarized off YouTube, right? And it turned out pretty good. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty I good. <laughs> some choreograph their routine. No, no. You guys did. We the- we cleared all of our furniture out of the living room. Oh, gosh. Our living room's not even half as big as yours is here. And we were like, okay, we could do this, and then we have to work our way back to the center, and then we could do this move. Wow. And initially, we were like, well, we'll do a edited version. We did Michael Bublé's "Feeling Good." And we'll like clip it down to like 90 seconds or something. No, we did the full four minutes and 20 seconds. And I know every word of that song from listening to it a (laughs) hundred times in a row. Could you still Um, do the dance? We, we joked about that actually the other night and I was like, come on, get up, get up. And it came back like pretty quick because we were both so nervous. We had like committed to doing this. We're going to do it. And Megan gets a little bit of stage fright. I don't, but I'm not a good dancer. So Megan's a good dancer, stage fright, not a good dancer. I'll look like an idiot and think it's funny. But we, she wanted to just go over it so many times to be confident. So we did it like, uh, I'm not exaggerating, probably close to 200 times. Oh my gosh. Just over and over. But this was months leading up to the wedding. Wow. And then we got so thrown off on the wedding day and not in a bad way with the first thought I saw when I saw Megan, it was like, oh, oh yeah. she looks so beautiful in her dress. This but is by, the first look, by the yes, way. Yes. The immediate second thought was, how the heck are you going to dance in this, Megan? Like, what were you thinking? It has like, a long train, a very big skirt. And the nightclub, so you're close to each other. You're hip to hip. And I was like, Megan, I am just going to destroy this dress trying to dance with you. I was panicked. I was, she's like, don't worry. There's a plan. And then sure enough, here comes Sarah in the 11th hour, the music, they're like <laughs> announcing us. Right, practically. still nervous. <laughs> yeah. And you bustled it. And I, as a groom, maybe a good thing to clarify for the guys. I had no idea what that was, but it was amazing. I'll let you describe the transformation. Okay. So Ryan didn't know what a bustle was. <laughs> and if you're watching this podcast, I do have episode all about bustles, episode eight. So it's where you take the train of the dress and you hook it up. So it picks up the train with a series of loops and ties and buttons and things. So it hooks up the train so it's not dragging behind you. So that her dress is now the same length, floor length, all the way around. So you're not stepping on it when you're dancing. So Ryan (laughs) didn't know that that such a thing existed. So he was very nervous looking at Megan's dress, not knowing how they're going (laughs) to dance in it. Took a couple extra pulls in my drink. I was like, well, here goes nothing on that. (laughs) But oh uh, it was an amazing transformation. And then the other part that threw me off is at the very end of our dance, I did this move where I lifted her up over my my head, not like dirty dancing, like where they're floating, but she's kind of pushing up on my chest Yeah, and yeah. I'm holding her up. And Megan's little, I mean, 95 pounds, something like that. <laughs> Great, and now everyone knows. <laughs> she's small. There's nothing to be embarrassed about there. And that dress had to have been 30 pounds, 25 it, it, pounds. It very well could have. We should have weighed it. Yeah. We, she yeah. still has it. And that threw me off because I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like She's heavier. Heavier be the key word yeah, there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because that was 30% of her body weight practically. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Ryan. So I was, you can even see it in the video. We joked like my facial expressions like, oh my God, hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> But uh, um, on the lifts, she, she was practiced with weights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even where I kind of scooped her on an earlier move, even there, I was like, this dress is, the dress is oh chunky. It's, it's a heavy dress. I bet you we'll, we'll reach out to Megan and have her weigh it. Have her weigh it, yeah. At least 20 pounds. Yeah. And she had this underskirt she was wearing too. It was the whole thing. Yeah. That was, that was fun. That was actually something we did think about while we were designing the dress. So I, your whole routine was <laughs> very much a secret. <laughs> 
but I had, I had a little inkling that something was going on because she's like, I got to make sure I can twirl in this. I got to make sure my arm can reach up. Yes, so yeah. We did the sleeves in such a way the that height. she has a little extra room in there. So we designed the dress according yeah. to this need. And then on the wedding day, right after dinner is when we bustled the dress and Ryan was standing there with me and Megan in the back hallway. And Ryan was like, mind blown. He's like, what are you putting all this fabric? I was like, what are we doing? Like, I thought she ripped it or something at oh, first. No. I was like, what, what, what are we doing? She's like, no, I'm bustling it. That was like, oh. She videotaped your, your facial expressions as that was happening. But it was funny because Megan originally didn't really uh, want to bustle the dress because she liked the way it looked, but obviously it needed bustled for the dancing. But then the day of the wedding, something I've never done before is Megan's like, okay, bustle up the back, but can you bustle the front too? And I'm like, I've never bustled the, the front, front of a wedding oh. dress before. So I'm like, but bride says, I can't tell the bride <laughs> no on her wedding day. So I grabbed all my safety pins and we bustled up the front of the dress, yes. which ended up working out really nicely because she was able to move around so easily. And then you could see her little shoes while she was dancing. It was so cute. Yeah. Well, and that's something too, not to give advice to the brides on here, but when we got our wedding photos back of the dance, those ended up being some of the best photos because when she was moving, the way that the the dress, there's something about having it kind of in motion, like real motion, not yeah. the simulated motion yeah. that yeah. photographers will do with the veil, but yeah. really dancing with it. Yeah. I think probably two of the four pictures that we said are our like wedding photos, you know, like our, our big pictures mm -hmm. were of us dancing because she looked so great just with it flowing and being able to dance in it versus a dress that's very restrictive and you can't really get any motion because we were fast paced, spinning, yes. tossing. And yes. It turned out being great for the photo. So all the more reason, guys, don't be afraid. Go out, get some dance lessons. Don't look like a fool out there, yeah. you know? I don't, And I think a lot of guys like Billy, I was trying to convince him to do the dance lessons, but he didn't want to. But I think a lot of guys are like embarrassed to do it or something. It's the only time in your life you can do this. And you have lifelong dance moves now, well, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're there. They're there, you yeah. know? You get a little liquid confidence, they start coming out. But yeah, you know, and it's weird how times have changed because you think not even too long ago, it was like manly to be a good dancer. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you could go true. and ask somebody like, can I dance? You watch Titanic from yeah, the 20s. It's and, like confident to be like, yeah, come dance yeah, with me. Yeah, come dance with me. And nowadays it's like, you know, you're cool if you can stand in the corner and just hold your drink and like, And the you know, girls go, yeah, you're so right. We've so changed that. We do. And I think that's something, it's like, you're getting married. So what are you afraid of perception wise? Like everyone you know, expects this. Yeah. Yeah. It's your job that day, you know, yeah. and it's part of the tradition. So that is something we need to change, men. Don't be afraid to go learn to dance. Even if you're not good at it, like me. Yeah. It's still makes it difference. fun. Like at the dance yeah. lessons, was it fun? Yeah. yeah. I had, you know, Meg, Megan, night. Megan took it like, it was like very businessy and i was like no this is fun we even one night we went and had a few drinks before the dance lesson okay we were like <laughs> well we should we should really be in the right frame of mind because you know we're gonna have a few drinks before our first dance at the oh, wedding okay it was all it simulated was, it was a great date night we that <laughs> she was real loose we were having fun that and ironically that was the first lesson where we were working on some of the the lips. Oh no. And I don't think I don't think they would have let us in if they knew we had been drinking ahead of time. They made you sign waivers and stuff. <laughs> the, the instructor don't you hurt yourself. Yeah. And he, when we came to him, this was like lesson eight out of eleven. We we're like, we want to mix in some lifts. Can you teach us some lifts? And he turned into like the safety police, like, well, you don't want to hurt your back and to Technique has to be perfect. Otherwise you're putting your partner at risk. Okay. Like, listen, man, like <laughs> I pick her up and throw her on the couch all the time. She'll be okay. She's not that fragile, oh you know, gosh. but yeah. yeah, they take it real serious, but having good moves or reasonably good moves on your big day is a mm -hmm. good takeaway, especially if you're investing in a videographer, you mm -hmm. know, uh, we didn't, and we still did all this mm -hmm. learn to dance. Yeah. It's definitely a good takeaway. You know? I like that so much. So I want to mention something about your wedding. And I just want to talk about your first dance because it was the sweetest, cutest, like most perfect first dance I have ever seen. And what happened was right after dinner, we kind of quickly went into the next room and quickly went into the first dance. So I heard that it was going on. And I like ran in there and I like 
weaved between people to make sure I got my front spot because I'm like, I'm not missing this. <laughs> I'm going to duck down in the front. Sorry. I had my phone out. I had my GoPro out. I love my GoPro. By I still the way. haven't I seen it. your footage of it. Well, that's oh, that I, after this. I just gave it to Megan last week. You guys should okay. sit and watch that. But that. yes, I brought the GoPro. So I suddenly became a little bit of a videographer for the day, but it was so fun to watch your first dance. <laughs> I was there having both my video things going like, but then like, I'm not looking through the video lens. I was looking at you guys and I literally like, I could get choked up again right now if I think about it too hard, but you're, it was just the sweetest thing. I loved watching it. And I loved seeing the dress move around and seeing how happy Megan was and how good all your dance moves were. It was <laughs> the cutest thing ever. And yeah. so if you're Following me on Instagram, I'll have some reels and things where you can watch their yeah, first dance because yeah. it was so cute and the yeah. lighting was perfect and oh, it, the Shinola, it was just like, just gorgeous. Absolutely yeah, gorgeous. Was I think we recruited you and Billy. I remember telling Billy, like even on the altar, I was like, by the way, you see this mark on the floor? Make sure it's clear. I need like, <laughs> we need space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was fun. Oh. You guys were a big help and taking the video and everything was, it was amazing. So that was definitely a fun takeaway from the wedding. <laughs> yeah, it was it was so great. So we're getting to the end of the list here. I got two left. Okay. Um, and then I have some tips of my own. Okay. The, yeah. My number two ties into a little bit of what we talked about. So I'll 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 be brief on it, but not doing personal vows. So this is controversial. I know some people are big on writing their own versus just the kind of the generic script that usually the pastor or the priest or whomever will give you. So this is one of the hundred times Megan was right. Cause we disagreed okay. and we went her way okay. on it. All right. And I was like, no, you know, why would we not say something personal, like make it our own. I don't want to do just the cheesy, you know, I do thing. Yeah. She's like, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not writing something. I'm just going to repeat after him. It's like, ah, I really disagreed. And as we talked about earlier, I was so choked up, even on the wedding part, which this is like 45 minutes after I've already seen Megan. I was, she's, I had my composure together. She started walking down the aisle, fell apart again. And I was just like, oh my God. And when we were doing the vows, I had to like look off Jason, like adjacent to her, not at her, but so it looked like I was looking at her, but I was making eye contact just left because I couldn't <laughs> even look at her without starting to cry. And I had to fight my way through the vows because I was just like, you know, you get nervous and I don't get stage fright. I don't get nervous in front of groups of people and you will, you'll get terrified. You'll get so nervous. I don't know how you felt on your wedding day, but yeah. I was terrified, Yeah, you know? Yeah. No, it, yeah, for sure. The feelings come whether yeah. or not you invite them. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. happening. <laughs> so, you know, this is. My number two, which I made a point to have one of the things Megan was right about on the list. Okay. <laughs> Unless you are extremely confident or doing a very small ceremony or doing something private, I would not recommend writing your own vows. Stick with the script. You know, you're going to have a hundred other things going. They already know how much they love you. You're getting married. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Stick with the script. Get it done. Okay, <laughs> walk out. gotcha. Because it, it'll be easier that way too. Because they kind of, they prompt you too, right? Yeah. They're like, do you Ryan? I ride, you know? <laughs> you need to repeat. Yeah, yeah. So my number two is don't write your own vows unless you're going to do it in a setting that calls for it, you know? <laughs> okay. Unless it's something you're really gung-ho about. So if you're like kind of teetering on the fence, then maybe yeah. don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you have a big wedding. Cause I think the more pressure you put, once you get up on that altar, mm -hmm. the more you're going to feel it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you're getting married in Vegas and there's 10 people in the room, sure. Maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But if you're doing a wedding with 150, 200 people and you think you'll be fine, you're going to be nervous and you're going to have the shake in your voice and okay. the tissue in your hand. So <laughs> yeah. I would, I would not, you know, if I could go back and tell myself, I'd be, smack myself in the head and be like, get that idea out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> you're not that okay. confident. <laughs> okay. So go Megan for having that yes. foresight. hundred percent right on that. So, awesome. all right. Are you ready for number one? Number one. I think there's a lot of anticipation for this one. I'm excited. Do you have any guesses what number one is? I think I do knowing who you are <laughs> my number you'll tell me if I'm you're okay. right my number one is make sure if you can afford it you get your own tuxedo for the wedding day and I'll explain why 
And my thought process is we are obviously fortunate leading up to our wedding. I had gone to a few black tie events, mainly the auto show for those of you in the Metro Detroit area. And the first year I went, I rented a tuxedo and I hated it. I have photos I'll share with you. Okay. I looked like I was swimming in the tuxedo, just didn't fit right. Yeah. It was horrible. So the next year I splurged and I really wanted to like look good, feel good. And this is many years ago too. And I bought a tuxedo, a Hugo Boss tuxedo. At the time, you know, the whole get up, I think it was like 800 bucks and it fit and you altered it you 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 altered it brought it in mm-hmm. i got it altered at the store and then you touched up i know you hemmed my legs before the wedding too great which by the way i don't do menswear this is a very special thing <laughs> yeah, for family yeah. members okay yeah throw that out there to okay. clarify yes <laughs> but it meant it's really easy to get men's clothes altered the department store will do it for you when you buy the tuxedos because they come unhemmed right mm-hmm. and it fits so much better. And it kind of plays into the very first thing I touched on, which is, you know, you want to look your best. And so if you're having an extravagant wedding or, you know, your budget allows for it, 700 bucks, $800 for a tuxedo that is fitted for you, not a million other guys that have worn that same outfit is a huge must. You know, it, it just, and it's a lifetime piece too. Mm-hmm. I've had that same tuxedo I got married in. I bought it five, no, six years prior to it. Wow. It was a year before I met Megan Okay, for that auto show. That's great. So I doubt there's a lot of not engaged men listening to this, (laughs) but if you are, maybe invest in the tuxedo ahead of time. Okay. I like that. Strongly, strongly, strongly recommend it. I wore the same tuxedo to Mike's wedding because he had a generic black tuxedo. I wore it there too. Great. Yeah. I get a ton. I've been fortunate to wear it I think maybe eight or nine occasions now wow and you got your use out of it yeah and you spend rental tuxedos nowadays with everything going up I think it's close to two hundred dollars if you're running the tuxedo yeah or more yeah so it's really a great investment because it'll fit you it'll fit you right get it tailored in and you know your bride's doing all these things to get the dress to look good don't be there you know looking all gumby in a big (laughs) tuxedo okay yeah so that's my that's my number one tip if you can afford it purchase a tuxedo don't rent it that's my my number one takeaway from a groom's perspective i I like bringing in this this guy's perspective because some of these i wouldn't have thought so i was wrong what did you think i was gonna i thought ryan was gonna say something (laughs) along the lines of the bride is always right or like (laughs) happy, <laughs> happy wife, happy life type of thing. I think probably most of the men, if they made it to the point they're getting, which have already learned that lesson, right? <laughs> Beyond that. Okay. okay. But that is true. We can, we can call that number zero perhaps, okay. but yes, your bride is always right. There was a few honorable mentions. I batted around on list, like, you know, be prepared to support the bride on the big day because just the, the, circus that they go through with the wife the hair at this time then the makeup and Mm -hmm. then the photos and Mm -hmm. this and that be flexible you know support the bride i thought about that as being a close number two but yeah being this is a a fashion podcast i wanted to end with something relevant like that that you you know think about yourself out there man yeah find a find a good tailor get a tuxedo get it fitted you'll look great on the big day you know and I do want to build off that that point that we just talked about too, that this wedding day is not about just the bride. Like there is a groom involved, like that's the whole point. So yes, as a couple, it's very important to please both of you. But of course, if there's something yeah. that the bride is really gung-ho on and she really, really wants it this way, like let's consider that. But same goes for the groom too. If there's something you really, really yeah. wanted, then we need to make sure that we cater to that as well. And of course, at the end of the day, the only two people in the room that we need to make happy <laughs> is the bride and groom. So that's all that matters. So, in, so in keep order. in mind, <laughs> in that order, <laughs> side by side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, But no, there's a, there's a lot of takeaways, but I wanted to stick on the topic of fashion for the most part, yeah. but yeah. you don't think about it. I didn't really think about it, you know, until I got the photos back actually. And I was like, yeah, yeah this it makes it'll make you look taller. You're like, make I it look, look thinner. good. Oh, for once, it's very. It's a great camera it's angle good. or something. Good. Uh, the photographer really knew what she was she, doing. Yes, yes, it was uh, Jane Victoria photography. Yes, right? yeah, she yeah. did a fantastic job. Yeah, on it. Made a shout is. out. You yeah. should post a link to her. She did a great job yeah. for us. So. You had some incredible vendors. You also had the Flower Alley. You had 
Kayla yeah. as Kayla your great. coordinator. She yes. was amazing. Yeah, she Love saved that. the day a couple times too. Yeah. Came in, she yeah. was like, "No, this is what we're doing." Yeah. And kept all the vendors. And yeah, stuff. she like knew what was going on. It was. Yeah. I thought that, that would be on Megan's list if you really? asked her from a bride's perspective. Yeah. I think one of the things she mentioned a lot was having that month of coordinator, which was through the flower alley. Yeah. Uh, she was fantastic. Really takes a lot of the stress off of both the groom and the bride. Yeah. You know. I regretted not doing that for my yeah. wedding. So yeah. yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. These are big events, you know, and, and I'm sure she did <laughs> things like she probably saved the day like 10 times throughout the day. You just didn't know it. Yeah. Never talked yeah. about it. Nothing like those, those vendors are really on your side the whole wedding day. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. And sister-in-laws too. <laughs> oh, and sister-in-laws. Yes. Yes. Got to have those. <laughs> okay. So I have a couple things I'm going to run through. Okay. So some of my advice, make sure you sleep the night before. So don't be out <laughs> with the guys until three in the morning. Okay. Go to bed at a reasonable time. I think you should be winding down whatever it is you're doing at 10 o'clock. Have a nice slow. Yes. No, don't be drinking too much the night before. Don't drink too much on the wedding day. Yes, that was that, uh, you got to watch that. This is a very important, expensive day. You don't want to drink too much. That was a big one because I obviously enjoyed my old fashions. It was my signature drink. And mm -hmm. yeah, she had me on restrictions. She's like, no, 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 you can have two drinks before the dance and not a drink more. <laughs> and I think I did break the rule maybe a little bit. I think I had, I think I had my third drink in hand that I sat okay, down to go do the dance. Starting the third, yeah. Yeah, but you do not want to. Honestly, I feel like it would almost be hard to drink too much because you're just so busy, like photos yeah. for this, photos for that, photos mm -hmm. for this. So mm -hmm. it kind of helps that way, but you want to make sure that you're prioritizing those things over like, no, I want to finish this drink. You yeah. Know? But yeah, it was almost hard to, it was just yeah. so busy, yeah. right? But yeah. yeah, don't drink too much. And if you do, make sure you're not hopping on a flight the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. A lot of men don't like taking photos. There's a lot of women that yeah. don't like taking photos either guess what? You're not getting around it. You're taking photos on your wedding day. I'm sorry. So do it. And when you're taking the photos, don't be so nervous. Really, these photos are for the two of you. They're for you to display in your home through like your whole lifetime. Your yeah. your future children are going to be looking back at these photos. And so especially as the groom, you can just act yourself. Like I'm sure the the photographer will definitely give you tips on how to stand, but like a lot of photos might be like the groom twirling the bride. So just truly twirl the bride. Don't try to look good for the photo. Just do what you would naturally do and just try to act as natural as possible. Pretend the photographer isn't there and just enjoy just the moment, just the two of you on your wedding day. Yeah, I think it really shows through, especially when you get them back. The best photos you end up getting are ones that were more candid, right? You're like, oh, I didn't even know they were doing that, right? And yeah. I think it's because... When people get nervous, they almost mask the emotions they're feeling. And the whole point of the day is to remember how you felt that day, right? So you don't want to mask the emotions of it. So definitely agree on that one. That's a that's definitely a good point. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, here's one. I think it's easy, especially during the reception, to start talking with your friends and your family and kind of get sidetracked. But I think it's really important, especially as the groom, I think, to make sure you're not away from your bride for too long throughout the wedding day you want to kind of stay together and dance together and, and talk to people together and move around together right yeah I was uh I feel like I was pretty good about it for the most I think part so, yeah. I kept her real close and I we were laughing we went to our first table of friends and we had an hour to get through 150 people mm -hmm. and I joked with her after that first table I was like that took six minutes. And she's like, oh my God, we got to go faster. <laughs> and we were walking up tables like, hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. And they're like, See, just moving to the next table. And honestly, a good piece of advice is talk to your close friends ahead of time. You know, like Megan has this close group of friends. There's like five or six of them. Like, they know, like, I see you all the time. They yeah. make a priority okay. yeah. for, you know, the out of town aunts and uncles you haven't met, the mm -hmm. guests that came mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. were, you know. Dates. And you're going to see those people on the dance floor. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, don't get caught up in trying to catch up over the last five years with each individual person. Just, hi, thank you for coming. You know, they'll do the niceties back and forth. Mm -hmm. You look great. Yeah. But you got to move. You got to, it's depending yeah. on the size of your wedding. It's tough. You got to and do yeah. it together. Don't divide up because yeah. then it seems like, oh, I didn't see Megan. Or, yeah. You know, I yeah. Didn't see Ryan. Together. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Good, good stuff. Okay. Make sure to have moments with the parents. So your parents, 
and her parents make sure that you have those moments with each of those people, especially as a groom to, you know, have a moment with her mom and her dad and, and making sure you hit those check marks. Right. Yeah, definitely. You know, whether it's during the ceremony itself or the reception, make sure your photographer knows who each person is. I made a point. I was like, Victoria, this is my mom. This is my dad. This is her mom. This is her dad. This is the grandfather. Yeah. You know, and anytime I saw them floating around, I grab a family member like, get a photo of us. (laughs) I think you and I have a couple of photos like that. Oh yeah. I love those. And then you also like, I think, well, early on in the day, you're not doing hair and makeup and stuff. So you had a really easy morning. And I think that's when you spent a lot of time with your immediate family, right? With your parents and your brothers and yeah friends so for guys on the day of it's much easier you're sitting in like sleeping dim clothes and all that till about 45 minutes before you need to be ready yeah so our parents came and sat we actually ended up we were in a hotel obviously Mm -hmm. hotel we ordered in a bucket of beers and some snacks and we just kind of grazed too because you don't want to eat too much either before a wedding Mm -hmm. you want to eat but Um, not too much and you guys threw us way off i shouldn't say you guys the yes the bridal party i got a phone call the photographer would be be there at three was always the plan three o'clock and at like 210 She'll be there in five minutes. I was like, what? <laughs> and I think you were the one that Change called me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think that, that and was it, that's right. what put us into a panic, but guys can get ready pretty quickly. And no, it was you. I think you called me and you're oh, like, yeah, you Sarah, I need down. a steamer. Yes. I a steamer in the girl's room. And you're like, bring the steamer down. We need to be we ready to- in five minutes. And I'm like, okay, the steamer takes 15 minutes to heat up, <laughs> but okay, we'll just roll with it. But that's one of those things that something will go wrong. And it wasn't yeah. even wrong. We got ready and the photographer was about 30 minutes out. Yeah. We were all dressed, ready yeah. to go yeah. by the time she it came. It was panic mode. I was helping you guys during that moment. Yeah. That was, that was nothing like five grown men just frantically getting dressed together. It was a special experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was great. I know I was I was getting ready with Megan in the morning. It was so fun. I got my hair and makeup done. So that was great. I got to see Megan in the morning. And then I left after I was done getting ready. I had steamed her dress out. Everything was good. I left and was sitting with you guys in the lobby for a little bit. And then I got a phone call from Megan and she was like, Hey, can you come up here and just make sure the dress is zipped correctly? And I'm like, okay. So I go and I run up there. Everything looks great. I saw her for the first time. Like I've seen her in her dress before, right? I was getting tears. I'm like, Oh my God, we're having a first look right now. Yeah, It was a moment. She's like, Sarah, quit it. Like I just got my makeup done. I can't have it. Okay. Pull it together. So I make sure it was zipped right. And then I get a phone call from you and you're like, we need to be ready right now. So then I go and I help you guys. And then I got a phone call from Megan and she's like, Hey, can you come make sure the veil is put in correctly so I go and do that and then I got a phone call from you guys that Billy's button broke so I was running down and doing that so it's like I was getting phone calls which was made me feel so special but I was getting phone calls from the bride and from the groom I was needed at both locations so Uh, I got to know the Shinola hotel pretty well I got to go to all the fun little suites and everything that they had it was gorgeous we started out so frantic but then it was smooth sailing from there as soon as the party started yeah there wasn't one hiccup the rest of the night so um, I it was a rough start but it worked out very smooth from there (laughs) oh my gosh it was so much fun yes definitely Okay, back to the advice. Oh, here's one I think might be kind of weird, but I think we need to talk about it. When I've gone to weddings, don't make the first kiss at the altar too short. Yes, we actually rehearsed it. Ahead oh, of okay. Time. Did we, you? Because <laughs> we had been videotaping the dance and a yeah. few other things. And I had seen that too, where people just like, it's and like they a just peck. Like peck. And, and the photographer doesn't even get it. Yeah. Miss it. Yeah. So we, but you also don't want to be on the other extreme of that. I think yeah, that's it's a, true. It's, it's a very true. slippery slope. Like you just start making yes. out in front of your whole family and everybody you know. Oh my God. But we had kind of like in our heads, we were like, I'm going to put my hand here. And it, we were going to like count it out like one, two, and then slowly pull away, you know? And yeah. It's got a, it's definitely a good thing to practice and it sounds dumb to say practice kissing, but like, you know, maybe we we did too, to be honest. And it it helps kind of take the nerves out a little bit too. Like, you know, you know where everything's going. Game plan. Yeah. (laughs) Have a game plan. But the the peck would probably be worse almost than the making out. Cause then you pass it, then it's like, you have no photos. The moment's just over. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Take your time, but not too much time. Okay. Here's one that I think goes for everybody in the bridal party, everybody attending the wedding, everybody that whole day, but especially the groom, don't complain about anything on the wedding day. 
Don't complain about anything. Don't complain about taking too many photos. Don't complain that your feet hurt. Don't complain that you're tired. Don't complain that, you know, like if you're a guest that the the bar line is too long. Like I think it's just a good courtesy to etiquette. not complain. Good etiquette. And then also every time the groom complains, the bride gets stressed out. So yeah. he already has not enough going on. So just don't add to it. Yeah. I, I remember thinking that to myself a little bit. I have chronic stomach issues. I, I don't feel good like half the days of the week. And I was like, no matter what, I'm not going to say one thing about my stomach hurts, my feet hurts, nothing. And I was like, just smile and be happy is the happiest day of your life it really is it's true for the bridal party too you don't want you know oh i'm not ready or oh i don't like i'm cold yeah isn't it no one wants to tough it out yeah it's one day yeah yeah tough it out yeah for sure and then also as the groom during wedding planning i think a lot gets taken on by the bride probably more so because she wants to it's kind of rare it's the other way around so the bride kind of takes on a lot. So I think as the groom, it's very smart. And your fiance will love you every time you ask her, how can I help? Yeah. So just asking and trying to take on the things that you can is very good. Yeah, I definitely, as a groom, you almost kind of have to interject yourself a little bit because one, you won't know anything of what anybody's talking about, but ask some questions, right? Like I didn't know at all, bustling, things like that, Yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah, you know, even if, Give your input where appropriate. Say, yeah, you know, I think that'll look great. Or no, I think we should do this. But don't be adamant about anything. It, give an opinion. Don't don't push it. You know what I mean? And See how the response mind. comes in and then go yeah. from there. Especially if they ask. I think the worst thing is that, you know, I I was guilty of myself and Megan will say something is just if your bride is soliciting your opinion mm-hmm. and you're saying, I don't know, I don't care. It just comes across the wrong way. You yeah, know? that's so, a good point. To say, yeah, I agree. I think that'll look great. Or, you know, yeah. no, maybe we try something a little different, yeah. you know? Yeah. Don't take the approach of like hands off, like whatever you want, yeah. just do it. Because <laughs> sometimes they do want someone to bounce ideas yeah. off of. Yeah. It is your day, both of you guys at yeah. the end of the day. So yeah. it's important, but, you know, be respectful with it. <laughs> That's great. So do you have any particular advice post-wedding? I think we talked a little bit. You got the honeymoon. You don't want to go the day after. Any Anything else post-advice, post-wedding advice? Yeah, I would say, you know, from my end, I definitely made things complicated, but I would make sure that you've planned ahead both with your work affairs, mm-hmm. even your home life, little things. You don't want to come back to a messy house. You don't want to come back to an empty fridge. You know, thinking about okay. some of those things kind yeah. of ahead of time will make the post-event much better. I made life very complicated. I actually quit my job. Yes, you did. (laughs) I quit my job a two weeks prior to my wedding. My last day was the Friday of the rehearsal dinner and got married as a completely unemployed person. Went to Aruba, took a week off and then came back and started a new job that I love. So it worked out well, but yeah, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to have like big things going on at work or construction project at home because I think you guys were still renovating your home yeah you guys I just married. ignored what was going on. yeah but there was a lot <laughs> you're definitely gonna want to clear your life a little bit avoid you know renovations job changes things like that I house definitely, hunting house hunting yeah mm-hmm. it, they I think they say moving and renovating are like the two biggest strains on, on a new marriage, marriage. Yeah. yeah so Billy and I did both of those things. Yeah. But you worked <laughs> we out turned fine, out okay. So a beautiful home to come back to. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, plan ahead. Don't don't make it any more stressful for yourself than you need to. That's, that's very good advice. How do you deal when wedding planning does get stressful? You have either just drama going on or what, like just when wedding planning gets stressful, what do you do? That's a hard question because candidly, I feel like the process was very smooth for us. I think it was, which yeah. is not it's or rare. or it was smooth for me at least. Megan, okay. Megan's probably listening. Right. I'm just like, what? what are you talking about? Yeah. From my perspective, it was very smooth. But we moved quickly on everything. Like we had picked a venue a month after getting engaged, and we had the food was included. You know, mm-hmm. we had chipped off a lot of the big hitters early. Mm-hmm. But everybody, every couple is going to face some adversity through the process. I think it's just important to kind of make sure you hash it out. We used to do a lot of wedding planning over date night. You know, we go and it's much easier to work out details if you have a a glass of wine and and nice Italian food coming. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's like, well, you know, 
I have wine, I have food, sure, whatever you want to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. But if you're doing planning at late nights after work and, you know, that's where it can get kind of not fun. So yeah. I would just definitely uh, have fun with the process. You only do it once for most people. So yes, enjoy it, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you have any thoughts or particular advice on wedding planning finances? Because these are not cheap. Do you have any <laughs> just like, just thoughts? I'm not going to laugh at this one too, but whatever you think your budget's going to be, plan on breaking that. That's how I felt if, wedding plan. Yeah. If you're in a situation where you're financially constrained too, if you have, you know, making up numbers, if you have $25,000 set aside for the wedding, don't budget to $25,000. Okay. Because it will never work. Yeah. Out, right? You got to have like, <laughs> like with house renovating, like you yeah. have a contingency budget, right? Yeah. Like a, it, things yeah. will always it's cost expensive. more and. You know, they say that the wedding industry is a great one because people are irrational when it comes to a wedding. They, it's very emotional. They, yeah, you justify, yeah. I'm only doing this once. It's yeah. one day of my life, this, that. And sure enough, they'll fall in love with the venue that's more expensive mm -hmm. or you'll want the charcuterie board at one yeah. o'clock. Yeah. It's an add-on because yeah. why not? In the champagne toast, yeah. right? It's So I would be realistic with yourself, with your partner, mm -hmm. uh, where you stand, what you want to spend. Don't spend everything you have kind of deal mm -hmm. and then work together too. Like we had things that came in more and I said, okay, I'll, I'll pick up this. You pick up that. Mm -hmm. I think communicating and making sure that you're making a decision together yeah. on it is probably important. Absolutely. And I think there are things too. I always say this with wedding planning, like you don't have to check every single box. Like you don't, no one says you have to have a wedding cake or maybe you yeah. have a cake, but it's a, a lower budget. For us, for example, it would have been, it would have made a lot of sense for our wedding to have a party bus. That was just not something we cared about. So it was an expense we could completely cross off instead of trying to do it low budget. We just crossed it right off. Yeah. So things like that, if it's truly not important to you, then don't do it. Right. Yes, I agree. And, you know, prioritize what is important. And I think it's the inverse is almost true. It's worth spending a little bit more money on the things that really are important for you mm -hmm. versus wasting money just to check the boxes like you and said, make right? other people happy. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's, it's your day. Be selfish. Yeah. You know? yeah right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Any tips on rings or proposing or just like immediate post engagement? <laughs> I think you teed me up on this one. I have the worst <laughs> proposal story in the world. Oh, there's so. no such thing, right? Oh my gosh. So I had asked her father for permission and then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So the world mm -hmm. shut down and I seized the opportunity to drag my feet for at least another year after that. Was it really? Okay. It was a whole year. Oh, wow. And, and Megan reminded me probably every day. So finally I was like, okay, I'm ready. I've saved up. So I bought her the ring that I thought she would want. I had some great input. I think you also helped me. Her mother helped me on it, uh, getting some ideas. And at the time she kept saying, well, I don't think we're going to have a big wedding. So I had allocated some of the wedding funds towards the ring too. Oh, okay. Thinking like, hey, we're going to have this small, simple wedding. And I bought it. And then I got so excited that I had it, that I was just overthinking it. And I was like, well, I'm going to do this elaborate proposal at the place that we had our first dinner. And then I was like, no, I'll do it up north. But that was months away. And it just like burns a hole in your pocket. I just wanted to get it out partially because I was getting grief that we weren't engaged and well, we had the ring. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then also partly because, you know, you want to, yeah, well, you want to, you, you want to move forward with it too. You mm -hmm. have it. It feels so real when yeah. you, the groom have it in your hand. Mm -hmm. So I completely went off script. We had gone out after work on a Thursday uh, with my work friends, not even, not even mutual friends had been drinking. And then we went to restaurant right around the corner, which is ironically where we had our first date and we got seated at the same table. Our first date oh, was on. Did you have the ring with you? No, it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> and we drank, it is Thursday and we drank and just talked about how fun that first date was and how we couldn't believe it had been five years. And then I started getting in my own head and everybody's advice is you'll know when the time's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And non-sober oh Ryan was like, this is a sign. Yeah. So we go home and we uh, get ready for bed, you know, pajamas, sweatpants, the whole nine yards. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I it's not over. I told myself that for like an hour and a half. Oh my God. She's sound asleep oh next to me. Gosh, literally asleep. Story. 
And so I go in the closet and I, I was like, you know, hyping myself. I'm like, you could do it. You could do it. Oh uh, a little bit of liquid courage. And I grab oh the ring gosh. and she's laying on her stomach and I get down on knee and I tap her. I'm like, Megan, I got something really important. I need to ask you. Literally. Is she asleep? She's asleep. She's oh like, my God. what? What? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm serious. Like, will you turn around and look? She's like, no, what? What? Oh she God. rolls over and is like, and her first words weren't like, oh my God, or yes. She goes, are you serious? <laughs> like, are you serious? Like, are you serious? Does it have to be right now? now? Not like, like, are you serious? No, yeah. Like, not in a good way. I was like, yeah, I'm 110% serious. And she got up and sprung to life, obviously super happy. And she's like, this is great. You know, obviously big embrace and everything. She's like, do you have some champagne or something? I was like, uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't thinking past this moment. And we didn't, we didn't have any champagne, nothing. So we made like, I don't even know, like Cosmos or something okay. and celebrated with that. And she was like, yeah, yeah. She, I can't call my mom or anything because it's a Thursday at like one in the morning, you know, I had work the next day. <laughs> oh my gosh. But the important part was she said, yes. It made for a great story mm -hmm. and it bailed me out of having to do any big elaborate proposal or anything like it that. It felt in the moment. Like that's what I like right. about that is yeah. that it was very like just raw and like yeah. how, how almost it should be instead of a huge elaborate plan, which is great too, but that's not, that's not you. And I don't think yeah. that's Megan. So it was nice that you was just had your moment. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, it did feel like, you know, I still look back jokingly, but it did feel like a sign, you know, we yeah. had, got seated at the same oh, table, yeah. and, cool. you know, to, had talked about it. So it worked out good. Yeah. Everything. She got the elaborate part when the time for the wedding came. Yeah. So. We made up for it later. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Oh, I love that. Okay. Any random must haves at a wedding? That's a tough question. Okay. I think the food and the drink is obviously important. I say that because I have like a lot of dietary restrictions, but I've been to weddings where they don't have like wine or it's like just wine and I don't yeah. drink wine okay. or just beer and I don't drink beer. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, the food and the drink doesn't have to be gourmet or top shelf, but have selection options, right? It's better to have a full bar with beer and wine than just premium wine or premium beers, but no liquor, you know, I think that's important. Obviously yeah. my head went straight to booze, but one total opposite of that at your wedding, you had a, a photo booth. So I think that's yeah. been popular lately. I love that. I think you're, you had a little book after and everything. Yeah. So Megan, I got a creditor with that. She had a couple, what sounded crazy ideas to me and they ended up being the biggest hits. One was the photo booth, which it wasn't even a regular one. I think it was like semi vintage -y or I don't know, it had a, a gimmick to it, yeah. but they even put a book together where every couple went out and got a photo. They laminated the photo, put it in a book and then wrote a little note. It's a great keepsake. And they were like, oh, it's a hundred dollar option. I was like, mm, do you look around, like what's another hundred dollars, yeah. you know, <laughs> we loved that. And then also, I don't know if you remember, we actually had a magician during oh, cocktail yeah, hour so too. Cool. Well, yeah, that was different. I Very entertaining. That. And it wasn't like the typical, like, you know, cartoonish magician. He was dressed up in a tuxedo like everybody else. Yeah. And he just walked around with a deck of cards and there's videos of us just watching these tricks. Like, how did he just do that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's something that you don't, you don't need like a stage for, you don't need space no. for the guy just wanders around he just and wandered he just around cocktail add, adds to the whole experience. I love yep. that. And then the third thing was she did, she wanted the jazz trio for cocktail hour. Yeah. That was nice. It was, it was a great touch, you know, and honestly, if you already have a live band, it's typically not a huge add on versus doing it just that. And then you have a DJ or something. Right. Um, right. Yeah. That was something I was like, ah, oh, you know, is that really worth the money? Like it's an hour. It really set the mood, right. Really kind of, it's the prelude to the big event, which is the reception. And I think that was money well spent. So she did a great job with a lot of those auxiliary activities that played into the big day. So good recommendations on her part. That's awesome. Okay. What are some Maybe this is a, a combination question. How, as the groom, can you most enjoy the wedding day? Slash, if you could tell all the grooms out there, just, just give them a little something, say the morning of their wedding, what would you tell them? I would say the most important thing is really, really try to soak it in. And you'll hear a hundred people tell you the same thing. Oh, it'll, it'll go by like that. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very true. But if you go into it cognizant that like, 
take this moment. And I actually talked about that when I went out to thank everybody at the end of the speeches is before I even said a word, I stood up there and just looked around the room for a second and was like, yeah, this is one of those moments, right? Just, you know, kind of bask in it. Even something as simple as the morning of the wedding. So we were a little unorthodox. We had uh, the suite at the Shinola. Mm -hmm. we, we ordered in a nice breakfast and sat on the balcony and drank coffee with each other. And we're like, okay. Oh, that's right. Are you, yeah. Are you ready for this? And, you know, had a nice breakfast and just took it slow. You know, mm -hmm. don't overstress. Literally try to live the day in slow motion, just at minute to minute, just, mm -hmm. you know, be in it. Yeah. So not the cliche advice. Oh, it'll go by yeah. fast. But think about that on the wedding day. Yeah. Soak in every second, every yeah. small moment, no matter how insignificant it seems, take it in, take a deep breath. And don't let your brain get all hung up on what we're doing next. What, what yeah. I got to get done yeah. when I get, need to be there. Like the whole day is pre-planned. Like every yeah. minute of that day is already planned. Like no one's going to let you be late to anything. So just like, <laughs> just don't like let your mind wander on just those logistic things. I think yeah. I would idea. say like the, op literally do the opposite of what your brain wants to do. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like think about we're in the rehearsal dinner right now. I want to take my time and I'm going to enjoy the dinner. I'm going to have the conversation at the table. Yeah. Cause if you're spending time thinking about going and doing the next thing, like who's next up on the speeches or something, mm -hmm. then you're missing the conversations and the moments that are occurring right then and there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you just mentioned rehearsal dinner. You had a beautiful rehearsal yeah. dinner that your parents threw at the yes. the Highlands. The Highlands yeah. at the mm -hmm. top of the Renaissance Center. Yeah. That was a uh, phenomenal major thank you to my parents, Mr. And Mrs. Bell. Yeah. But yeah, you know, something that Megan made a great point of was really trying to tie a cohesive theme for the whole wedding. And ours was kind of, I mean, you would have the right fashion or term for it, but like retro fifties, like classic yeah, um, right. yeah. look to it. Like we did black tuxedo yeah, with the dress. Very classy. Yes. Um, we made sure we found a venue that had a very similar feel to it, just so it seemed like everything was kind of cohesive through mm -hmm. the night. But it was, it was a shame because it was such a nice dinner and such good drinks. But again, like your advice earlier, don't drink too much the night before you will Take regret it. it. Slow. Yes, definitely, yes. definitely. But it was a, a beautiful rehearsal dinner. And yeah. that was something that also a good opportunity to talk to that extended family. Yes. Have the longer conversations. Yeah. So then. you're not tied up the day of the wedding. You don't want to spend your whole Such day talking point. to everybody. You want to get out on the dance floor, have fun. Yes. So yes. definitely. <laughs> Enjoy it for you. Oh, you know what? I have a tip for your wedding. You should make sure you know who has the the cards, the, the <laughs> money, uh, for the gifts for the wedding. Yes. Can we you were, speak to that? We were a little bit panicked. This is my fault. Honestly. No, no, it was okay. We threw the big wedding. We had a decent amount of guests. I think about 140 were in attendance and we had a card box in the display and Shinola was fantastic, but like most wedding venues, it was a hard cut. You know, as soon as that time rolled around, they cleared you out. Mm -hmm. We got up to the room and looked at each other and goes, who's got the card box? And I was like, I don't know. They brought it up, I think. And then even the next morning, the staff came up and brought all the stuff up and left it in our room. Wasn't there either. And we were just in a dead panic. And I called Billy. I'm like, do you have a box? He's like, no, I don't think so. And it wasn't until we really started to panic that we found out that I think you guys did. So have, I slept right? in until nine <laughs> in the morning and I wake up to the bride and groom in a panic because they have no idea where the card box was. I yes. took it upon myself <laughs> and I had taken the card box to my room, not realizing that I should have told somebody <laughs> that you did that. So they were safe and sound in my room. But yeah, they woke up in a panic. I felt bad. A little small panic. It wasn't yeah. anything earth shattering, but we were like, well, that wedding got even more expensive. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So I got it back to you guys right away. But oh. yeah, so that's just a teeny little thing that I think people forget about. Yeah, um, it's detailed. Make sure you detail. coordinate who's It's a one. very important detail, but a small yeah, one for don't, sure. Don't lose the wedding gifts. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to wrap up with, again, like you mentioned a few minutes ago, just truly embracing the whole moment yes. of getting married. Again, this is typically something you only do once in your lifetime. So like being the bride is, is super fun and important, but being the groom, this yep. again is for you too. And yeah. just being sure to soak up every moment of being engaged, planning the wedding, the wedding day and enjoying all of that. Yeah. I echo your thoughts. It's yeah. your day too, gentlemen. So 
try to enjoy it, look good, feel good and have a good time. Right. Awesome. Love that. All right. Well, thank you, Ryan, for being on this podcast. It was so fun to have you as a guest. And I learned a lot more about you and your proposal story (laughs) and more tidbits about your wedding. So thank you for being here. And I'm hoping that we can help all the future grooms out there. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this episode has allowed you to approach the world with greater confidence in your own personal style. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out through email or inquiry form on the website. I hope you are all ready to go and get dressed up. I look forward to sharing more dressing up tips with you in future episodes. See you there.